In a lot of projects, I see scratches using multiple green flag blocks. Sometimes one per sprite and often many more than that. It seems like the obvious way to initialize things and often it may work well or at least appear to work well. Take a look at this very short project. The stage contains three costumes which are used to show which level of the game the player has reached. There is a sprite called manager which is simply used to initialize the game so that the player starts on level one each time. There is another sprite called click me which is where the actual gameplay takes place. When the game starts, this sprite ensures the correct background is being displayed and when the sprite is clicked, the player goes up a level. Possibly not the most exciting game in the world, but useful for this example. Let's see the game in action. Notice that the level variable is being displayed at the top of the screen so we can see exactly what is happening. When the green flag is pressed, the level variable is set to 1 and the background shows that we're on that level. When I click the sprite, the level variable increases and the background graphic updates to match. But now is the interesting part. See what happens when I click the green flag to restart the game. The variable has been reset to 1, but the background is still showing level 2. It's happened because of the order the green flag blocks were executed in. It's very important to realise that Scratch doesn't run multiple scripts at the same time. For example, it will execute all the green flag blocks but possibly not in the order that you want them to be executed in. In this case, it's executing the one in click me first, which displays the background for the level variable before running the green flag block in the manager sprite, which resets that level variable to one. Now that the variable is set to one, if we click the green flag again, it appears to work correctly. You'll often see project instructions stating that the green flag should be pressed twice to play, and this is generally the reason why. This problem can be fixed easily, and it's a great example of why it's important to control the flow of code in your project. Let's modify the click me sprite so it doesn't use the green flag at all, but uses a broadcast receiver to set the initial background. Now, let's modify the manager sprite so that it initializes the level variable and then broadcasts for the click me sprite to perform its own initialization. We now have only one green flag block so we know exactly which script will be executed when the green flag is clicked. We have also made it so that we know for a fact that the level variable will be initialized before it is used. Using this kind of technique also makes code a lot easier to follow. Instead of scanning through multiple green flag blocks from the very beginning, we can control and follow the flow of the code much more easily if we actually take control of that flow.